Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards. And today we are looking at one of my Black Friday purchases. Funny enough, I live quite close to uh, this company's headquarters or for when they ship out of, um, and everybody else got their Black Friday's uh, order, like on Monday or Tuesday. I got it a little bit late. I didn't get it until yesterday, so. But that's just my luck. Anyway, I had some other keyboards to take a look at. But I've been wanting to take a look at this one for a while from what everybody is showing. Um, posting on our budget keeps, it looks like this is a uh, nice kit to get. So looks like good things will come in. And I'm also going to be trying a new switch. So let's go ahead and get to it. So if you're uh, on a budget key, you probably know what's coming next if it's if you see these this from the key company. Now this is my first experience with the key company, um, but I'm real excited. First off, we see that this keyboard does come in a case. Now I know a lot of folks out there might say, why do you need a case for your keyboard? And I say, isn't it nice to have a case for your keyboard in case you do need to carry it? That's just my counter argument. This usually is not seen, uh, but on you know per over one hundred dollar boards um, such as the KBD sixty seven Lite, um, I believe Novel Keys, uh, the NK eighty seven comes with the case. Uh, back in Echo and then as you get more expensive now this board usually goes for $99 and they had it half off I believe $59 or almost half off um, yeah 60 bucks I believe for their Black Friday sale now I did pick up a set of switches for it. I did not pick up keys I've got plenty but I did pick up Some SP Star Magic Girl. I keep reading about them, seeing them, and uh, they're supposed to be a decent tactile, so I figured I might as well pick them up because yeah, they it only added, I believe, twelve dollars, thirteen dollars to the entire uh, package. So I was actually quite surprised. All right, so opening it up, I gotta love that. Like I said, I gotta love the case. I know that it's not a necessity. But having one for your keyboard, especially when I put you know my nicer keyboards away and I'm having to put them in a cardboard box, worrying that it falls or gets crushed, a nice padded case. Yeah, that's nice. So before we get to the keyboard, let's see what we've got as far as accessories go. Oh, we got a new sticker to add to the collection. And uh, once I get my new studio up, which is going to happen, but it's going to take a, a a little while, um, I'll be adding stickers and you know all the 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 smaller vendors that I support all right so there we got some screws and what look like studs we've got a keycap puller we've got a set of tweezers we've got an allen wrench we've got some more gaskets and it looks like we've also got feet we've got a it is a basic but I like it's a more See how the profile on it is it's it's a lot thinner this is the if I'm if you're gonna put a USB C cable for a keyboard I prefer that um, but it is braided but it's your standard cable uh, this keycap puller which is actually an IC puller uh, I know some people like these I, I'm not that's not necessarily the type that I like but it is nice that they included that and we also got a screwdriver so I've said this before when extra switches and or tools are included that's a great thing in my opinion um, they're looking out you know the customer switches sometimes go bad have a couple extra switches tools okay I don't need to dig for this specific size I can just go ahead and do it right now um, that's just so 
let's take a look at the Portico 75 from the Key Company. Now, it's not very heavy. Let's see what it weighs. It's out of the box before we've added the feet or any switches. It comes in at, oh, 718 grams. A little bit more than I thought it would. Um, I guess the weight is pretty evenly distributed. I guess the weight's pretty evenly distributed. But um, we do have plate, PCB, foam, or silicone it looks like. We have screw and stabilizers that look like they have not been lewd. That's fine, we can take care of that. We have, looks like the plate and the PCB are screwed in together. Those could be those studs that we saw. We have south facing LEDs, obviously five pin compatibility. Uh, we have a metal knob uh, that is practical. We only have two keys. Um, there's space obviously for more had they moved over a little bit. I prefer to have at least three, if not four, but two is still, you know, I, I still got a little bit more, but you're kind of kind of going into a different territory when you don't have the navigation keys, especially more so I can program more functions into there if I'm going to get into more layers. Um, taking a look at the back. All right, we do not have any feet. Now, I'm a big proponent that if you're going to stick to plastic, that you should have adjustable feet. I mean, when I know that obviously when you're doing metal, resin, any other material like that, it's not necessarily easy or you know productive to try to put feet in there. Uh, but when you're on a plastic board, I like to see angled feet. It gives me choice. I'm gonna need the feet on there. That's um. Huh. Odd that it's that loose without the feet. But let's go ahead and put those on so we give that at least a fair shape. And they have their badge on here, but it just seems to be something that's probably heat applied, more like a sticker. So, and then we do have screws, but it does appear that they are going into uh, metal studs which good we don't have to worry about the hole stripping and you can see the gasket layers there on the side but oh yeah there is a bit of flex pressing on the um on the plate we can see that there is a little bit of give now there does seem to be some sort of padding there because it's definitely not hollow. There's definitely something there. I wanted, I'm kind of thinking maybe instead of it, I don't think I need to open it. I think, I think I can just apply a little bit of lube and to the stabilizers from the outside, some switches and load up some keys. So this is my um, super, lube, super Lube Oil and Grease Mix. For right now, this has been working for me pretty good. It's basically, it's about an 80% um, grease to about a 20% oil mix. And I just basically heat it up. A Kerbal has a video on how he does his D-Lube and I kind of followed that, but I did it with the Super Lube. And it mixes pretty good. I mean, so I'm just gonna go ahead Pull out the stabilizers. I'm gonna add a little bit right there where it's touching plastic. That's enough because they're actually fairly, um, they move very freely. So they're screw and stabs, and for the most part, usually screw and stabs are of better quality. And I mean, obviously, they're gonna be way more stable. So let's take a look at these switches real quick before we load them up. Like I said, I don't know much about them. They're SP start. I guess I didn't need to do that. Some packages you need to do that first. So. But these aren't sealed. Let's 
excuse me. So we've got a tactile switch, does not have an SMD window. We have five pins and we have, it's, it's more tactile than a brown, but it's a light, very light tactile. And it has not the most of bottom out and it does not appear to be long pull. Yeah, I, I, although I've read about them, I, I don't I'll remember the specs offhand uh, right now, but it seems to be a lighter spring. An SP star, I don't know who manufactures them. But these are the switches that we're going to load up. But before we do, I want to take a look at this because I know, do know that this is an RGB cloud. Oh, I love how close the port is, so there's no recess there at all. Yeah, so we do have downward facing. I was figuring we did since we had the case. Um, being uh, semi-opaque or translucent, that there'd be some downward lighting. I'm not a big fan of the default effect, but <laughs> be able to change it once we get it loaded up here. But um, yeah, so far I, I like what I see. I'm definitely going to go stock with it and see what see what we find. But as always, I'm going to put it on my list to come back. I know I, I've been doing primarily reviews. And here in the next week or so, I'm going to start catching up. i got a whole bunch of mod videos. I've got some new materials, a whole bunch of ideas. Um, some maybe a little bit different, maybe a little bit new. Might break some stuff. Might find some cool new stuff. But those are coming soon. Uh, we've got the switches loaded. I actually did load up um, use via.app in, in your browser. Uh, it's a website, via is now by web. I mean, the binaries is still out there for anybody that wants them. I mean, they're mirrored in a lot of different places. I do want to do a via video, um, and I can do a basic one or a more in depth one. As far as you know, loading firmware, changing lighting when it has that control. Now this one does have, uh, when you load it in via, it does have the lightning lighting tab, which has you know the ability to turn the caps. I don't think I turned that one on. Um, to turn the caps lock to a different light color, uh, to set the modifiers and the alphas to different colors. Um, it's got the same features in via as you would see with say like an NK87 or NK65. Anyway, so thus far, uh, it, it's funny because <laughs> we all ordered, not we all, a lot of uh, other users on Budget Keebs ordered this on Black Friday because it was a deal. It was 50% off its regular price. And and despite many of us already having 75% um, kits with NOM, I mean, it was just too good of a deal to pass up. I mean, for this build, I, will, I don't know if I've, I'll cut this out or I'll leave it in. Anyway, we'll see. So, again, we've got VIA. And the VIA functionality is good. You don't have to load a separate JSON file. You just plug it in, authorize the device. Uh, well, plug it in, go open your browser, go to use VIA. Use VIA.app and it will open up in your browser. You no longer need to download the binary. The binary is still out there in the wild, but it, there's no need. This one is recognized immediately because it must be already accepted by VIA and their files are there. So it has all the functionality to change the lighting, RGBs, key mapping, has six layers, um, everything that VIA has available, it pretty much has. So today for this one, I was gonna go with, uh, I've, I've bought quite a few sets. Um, now they're not branded, they're just sold as, uh, but they're all been pretty good from uh, Mint Cap. I don't know if it's a brand, Mint Caps, or yeah, it's Mint Caps, um, if it's a brand, but they, they have some pretty good uh, uh, choices. And I got these, which are just a basic white on black, but they are in the MSA profile. So 
So the MSA, for all intents and purposes, we've got a, um, it, it's a flat profile, though it's a little sculpted too. I would almost tend to describe it as a, as a bit of a sculpted XDA. These are nice double shot keycaps. Uh, I got them on Amazon. I did get them on sale. I don't know if it was a lightning sale during Black Friday or Cyber Monday. Um, no, not, it was before. It was the one of the last, the second Amazon day, I think. I don't know. They were, they were on sale for $19.99. So I bought actually the white on black and the black on white. So thickness of the walls here comes to 1.7. That's one of the reasons that I like this. These, I mean, these are as thick, if not almost as thick as say MT3 caps. Um, they're not quite as satisfying, but they, I, I do like them. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of cherry personally. I know a lot of people are. Um, I actually mess up a lot with cherry if it's a lighter um, spring weight on the, on the switch. Uh, I tend to, my, uh, my accuracy rate goes down. Takes, takes a bit of a hit. So anyway, so today I'm gonna load these up and then do my final thoughts on the Portico 75 by the key company and then we'll do a sound test. Let's get technical. Today we're taking a look at the key companies Portico 75, a QMK via 75% 79 key knobbed keyboard. It currently retails for $69.99 from the key company, and they allow you to select a certain set of keycaps for $18 more and a certain set of switches for $12 more. It is a polycarbonate case with a set typing angle of 8 degrees. It comes default with an FR4 plate, weighs 718 grams out of this box, and 916 grams with keycaps and switches as seen here. It has a chin of 21 millimeters with a back of 38.5 millimeters off the typing surface. The switch we are using today is the SP Star Dark Magic Girl. This is a 67 gram tactile switch that comes with a gold plated spring. It is five pin and pre lubed from the factory. Both the top and bottom housing are made from nylon and the stem is made from palm. The keycaps that we will be using today are from mint caps. They are of MSA profile there are double shot PVT, white on black. The body has a thickness of 1.7 millimeters. So in closing, I think this is a pretty good deal, especially the fact that, I mean, it went on 50% sale on Black Friday for $59.99, but now it seems to just be retail of $69.99. $69.99 for a gasket mounted open source kit that screw and stabilizers, QMK via, uh, comes in a case. I mean, it, it's really a good deal. If I had to just say, you know, a couple of things that I, I just don't know why. I mean, design choices. I, I, I do think it's great that they added the metal studs for the screws so you don't have to worry so much about stripping uh, the plastic and not being able to close it properly. But I do wish they would have a, uh, used a different knob, at least a bigger size. It looks, I don't know, it kind of looks weak. I don't know. Just, I mean, that's, like I said, neither here nor there. And I also wish they would have put, um, or at least one more button, or I mean key, or maybe some indicators right here. That's just me. Now, the RGB, uh, I think they, I don't know, to me, it kind of just gave up somewhere along the line. It, it does not diffuse at that well at all and the switches that they offer though i mean i'm not necessarily a star of these sp star magic girl uh, tactiles i don't think i mean they're i don't think they're a good switch 
uh, and the fact that it doesn't have an SMD window, which blocks most of the RGB out, is, I don't know, it's kind of like, all right, let's do RGB, you know, a, a, an RGB cloud, what I like to call an RGB cloud, are the keyboards that are literally just meant to, you know, have RGB coming out of every corner of it, and that's why they have the translucent cases. But in this case, it feels like they gave up halfway through. Like, hey, let's do our, yeah, no. So if this came in solid colors, I think that would be a good choice. This may be the keyword that I choose. I do plan to do a video on uh, spray painting these translucent semi-opaque cases um, and making a solid color and finishing it, you know, to where it actually sticks and sticks good and doesn't chip. Um, this may be the one that I do it. This is polycarbonate. So I may actually have to do a PC and an ABS, um, though I don't think the, the, the primary parts are going to be much different. It's probably just the prep work um, to see which one requires or does require any sort of uh, sandpapering prior so that it creates an adhesive surface. But a lot of times with plastic, I've just been able to use the um, primer and the color mixed in spray paint and as long as you do nice light coats and go from there it usually works and then obviously close it off with a clear coat um, with at least a three good layers of clear coat and let it cure for a good 24 to 48 hours i mean that's a big thing that when i had issues it was when i was impatient and i just didn't wait and i just wanted to get to that you know finished product and you know then I'd cause issues with the paint I mean so anyway when it comes to this keyboard right now it seems to be MSRP $69.99 from the key company uh, it does offer the option to add a certain set of key caps for I believe $18 per set and certain switches for $12 um, and they do include a few extra so since this is a I believe it's a 74 key so it looks like they include um, 80 switches total um, but it's 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 got it's got a flex and they do include some more gaskets so you can add some more flex it's got a decent profile though being plastic I really wish they would have added uh, some kick out feet so I could have different choices of angles I do intend to open this keyboard up like I said I'm probably gonna spray paint it uh, because the RGB just doesn't just doesn't do the trick now there's another thing that I found quite odd here um, I don't have I don't I can't think but a maybe my MT3 sets are the only ones that have a uh, I guess that's a 1.5 yeah, because that's a 1.25. So that's a 1.5 or 1.75. It only has size for two keys right here, but it wants the bigger size keys. And this um, MSA mid cap set that I had did not have um, the bigger function key. That's why I've got the control right there. So just I find this odd of a layout where you still go with the shorty shift over here, but then I don't know. Like, I mean, to me, there's a couple little design decisions that. I don't get but that set I think it's a great kit it's well made uh, I haven't had any issues with it yet I've already plugged it into via it's got a lot of options does not have per key RGB I thought it did but it does not even in QMK so it probably just doesn't have enough RAM but it does have a couple of preset options in via like a different backlight color for the modifiers and the alphas um, and a couple of different patterns there and obviously you, you have I believe six layers worth of um, you know key mapping that you can do and you can actually select keys to turn on a different color so let you know what layer you're currently on so anyway uh, because it's an uh, via QMK keyboard I mean honestly for this price at $69.99 it's a steal um, I did not purchase it when it was listed at regular price of $119 there are I'm going to go ahead and say this now. There's a lot of really good budget boards that are coming here in the next few months. As 2023 comes in, we're going to have a slew of Chinese boards that a lot of them aluminum for $100 or less. Uh, a lot of them with Vaya out of the box. 
most all of them with gaskets. We're going to see a lot of budget board that gasket mounted, um, you know, closer to the, you know, TH80 IK75 gasket mount. I mean, you can make it more gasket mount with some mods, but it's going to have a little bit of flex. A lot of features. The budget game is going to be changing. And when I mean budget, I mean, I know on budget cubes we say budget really just means each to each their own personal budget. But in this context, I'm saying budget as sub $150 keyboards, we're going to see a lot, a lot of choices and with options that some would have said even a year ago that it just can't be had for that price. Like I said, open source, um, exchangeability with the knobs into different places, gasket mounted, um, just aluminum CNC cases for a hundred bucks, a lot of choices. So anyway, I can, um, I can say that this is definitely, I mean, it's pretty good stock. It does have some flex, um, but I want to say it's probably the switch in this situation because I'm not a big fan of it, but it could be the keys. I, I like them on another board. Go ahead but... and, um, Leave you guys with a stock sound test of the uh, Portico 75 from uh, the key company with uh, the uh, SP Star Dark Magic Girl tactile switches, which are uh, 67 gram tactile, uh, and with these mint cap MSA keys. Hope everyone is having a good uh, beginning to December, <laughs> last month of the year. Until next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.